Welcome to day 40 of the Sacred Pause. Thank you to our dear brother Nicola for his meditation last night. What a feeling it was when he asked us all to join hands in his sacred garden. I felt you all with me, both holding my hand and touching my heart. Thank you, brother, for holding out your hand to all of us. I wanted to start today with a poem I wrote. And I stepped out into the darkness. And I held its weighty hand. I felt a pain I'd never felt before. A pain my heart couldn't understand. And yet, as I looked deep into its eyes, I saw love and I saw fear. He was vulnerable, just like me. And in that moment, when we were near, there was grace, incredible grace, and great beauty, incredible beauty. And finally, my darkness was filled with light. Yesterday, we talked about how it can be easy to fall into the traps of habit. Even though we know we would walk a higher path if we walk down a different street. And for today's drop of wisdom, I wanted to open up a raw wound in my heart with you so we can all remember that it's okay to be sad. Now, many of us have lost people in recent weeks, and recent days, And many of us know people who are suffering greatly right now. And one thing which is so important is that we don't put up walls to our emotions. People really need us to be present right now. And our authenticity is probably more important than ever before. There was a lady who lived next door to my mum's house when I was growing up. She was a beautiful soul. Her name was Brenda. And I've known her all my life. She was part of Operation Pied Piper, an evacuee in World War II. So, like most children in London, she was separated from her mum and her dad for many years during an important time in her life. One day when I was around 10, so in 1987, I was playing football with my friend, and one of us kicked the ball onto the roof of her house. It probably made quite a big bang, But nothing got broken, so my friend and I thought nothing of it. But when my mum popped round to her house a few hours later, she found Brenda curled up under a table, shaking. Brenda thought the war had started again. As I grew to be an adult, Brenda and I became great friends. I saw she was a wonderful lady who had so many stories from the war and 
I could have spoken to her all day. What Brenda didn't know was that her soul used to come and visit me at night in my dreams and show me the true level of what she'd experienced in World War II and also how terrified that Brenda was about dying. The human side to Brenda had been taught that death was the worst thing possible, connected only with heartbreak and torment, devastation. And this meant that she really couldn't come to terms with death and had no idea how to prepare for it. She couldn't face even talking about it because she saw what it did to people and families during the wartime period. And worse still, I think she was scared there'd be nothing if she died. I tell you this because on Thursday night, Brenda, now age 91, well, her soul came to me in a dream. She asked me to step into her greenhouse, her favourite place on the earth. And she told me she was going to die that night. The beautiful thing was that straight after she told me in the dream, her 91-year-old fragile body turned into the body of a young, happy girl who laughed and ran like the wind back into her treasured garden. On Friday, I told our brother Marcel of my dream, unsure how real it was, but desperate to share it with someone. And I added Brenda to the healing pot on the sacred paws so we could all help her. I was informed on Saturday that Brenda had died by her son and it hurt. Even though I knew somewhere in my soul it was coming seen it in my dream she'd come to visit me it still hurt like hell because I'd lost someone I loved my brothers and sisters you may have heard it in my voice on Saturday and you may hear it in my voice now but I was so sad and I still am I think Ten years ago, I would have blocked it out and told everyone I was fine. But it's so important that I don't block it and that you don't block these feelings that you're having about these people who you love, who are struggling or gone. We, we can't build any walls, not anymore. We need to embrace the darkness. We need to feel the grief. And even though that I know and we all know that death is part of our journey and there's a nice journey after that too, it doesn't make it easier to lose people we love. I just hope that I get to see Brenda in my dreams sometime soon. And I'm sure you feel the same about your loved ones. Today, our beautiful Mexican sister of the ocean, Dana, will take us back to a time when we were part of creation. Before you begin, please open sacred space and send healing to all the national parks that grace our beautiful planet Earth, to all the wildlife, to all the plant life, trees and mountains that dress our planet in green and a million other colours. 
please also send healing to the health workers and carers who continue their incredible work all over the planet. And let's all please send healing to the soul of Brenda Lucas, who left the Earth plane on Friday night. To Tom Hansen in the UK, he's also really feeling sensitive to the energies right now. Let us send healing, more healing, to Tara Hunt and her husband Miller, whose first child is coming any moment now, separated from each other by the Atlantic Ocean. Please send healing to Octavio Iscorado and his family in the Czech Republic, and to the beautiful soul that is his father. Please send all your love and healing to Pearl and to Mary, our beautiful sisters who are very much in need of love right now, and to Debbie. Finally, please send healing and love to Kath Whitney, who is nursing her father in his final hours right now. The revolution has begun. Let's evolve with honour and compassion. Yours in peace and love. Peter. Namaste. Namaste.